Hi, my name is Gordon Beaming and in this video I'm going to talk to you about migrating test artifacts and all other kind of work item types using the Azure DevOps migration tools. If you've watched the previous video on me migrating work items in Azure DevOps, you would have seen that I used the built-in move work items between projects uh, functionality. The one con of this is that you can only move work items within the same account. Um, the other issues with it is that obviously it takes a while. Um, if you remember me migrating stuff with their state and the, the, the path, the area paths and whatnot, like it was a, a long process of manual work. Um, the Azure DevOps migration tools allows you to do this a lot more seamlessly as you'll see in this video later on. Okay, so what are the Azure DevOps migration tools? Well, it was a tool that was created by Martin Henschelwood. Um, now sits on GitHub as an open source project and it allows you to cr migrate work items between one team project and another in the same accounts and different accounts from on-premise um, to the cloud or the other way around. Um, he has a video on YouTube which you can watch that will give you an introduction to the tool um, and its various uh, configurations. You can see under quick links there's a whole bunch of other uh, nice links to look at. For now we're just going to look at the getting started. So you can see that you can install this off Chocolatey which I have already gone and done. And you can see um, something that he does mention in the video is that you can uh, run a init command which will give you a starting config. And but before we dive into that if we just look here um, at the work items that we had before. If you remember when we try to move just as a recap uh, we moved normal items, we selected what area paths and whatnot, and we clicked go and everything worked. But if you try to do that for a test item, you'll see it gives you a warning that says, no, nope, we can't do that. Um, and if we look at the other uh, test artifacts, it pretty much does the same thing. Um, so yeah, we can't use that functionality if we're moving normal test items. You see there's another field there, um, which we have to add in order for this to work. So we'll just go ahead and add a migration group. Um, and then we're going to add a, an existing field that we have there, um, which is basically this reflected work item field, which is just a normal text field. Um, and for our process template, we're just going to set that to hidden. So I've already added it to the rest of the work items. I was just showing you uh, me adding this to the test case. So if we do open a test case, so you can see that that field um, is hidden on the test case itself. And um, if we just hit a scroll down, there we go. Okay, so let's um, take a look quickly at what work items we have. So we have two epics. I'm just going to go ahead quickly and just refresh all the tabs um, just so that there's no sort of uh, dodgy or faulty state. Um, and basically what we've got is one tab from the project we're migrating from and then the next tab is the project we're migrating to with the same sort of view. So there we have um, two epics. You see there's nothing in our new project. We have four issues that are currently all linked to the to one of the epics. Um, obviously none of those have migrated across. Uh, we have the board view open, well sorry, the backlog view open as well because we're going to use that a bit later. Um, we have a test case, sorry, a test plan um, that if you look inside of it's got a test suite uh, with one test case in it. Just pop that back uh, to the test plan view quickly. If there's nothing in the new project. We have um, test configuration of Windows Server 2019, which obviously doesn't exist either inside the new project. And then we've got a iteration path for our uh, source project and that doesn't exist in the, the target. And you can see that we have work items that are assigned to that iteration path as well as the area path um, of team ABC. And obviously running the query for all work items, you can see that nothing currently exists in our target project. So we'll start off and we'll just run that um, that init command just so we can see what that config looks like. Again, Martin explains um, this part of the process in his video. But this is just sort of a, a small recap of what that looks like. So if we go into VS Code, we can see this is what the config looks like. So you basically specify a source and a target uh, account. 
There's a whole bunch of options for field mappings, uh, which we're not really going to use much of at the moment. And then at the bottom you have processes, which is basically the part that we're going to use for now. So we'll switch quickly and look at what our config looks like. So you can see there we are pushing stuff between um, my demo accounts from the default project to the project awesome. Uh, we're selling it that it mustn't allow cross project linking. And then if we look at the processes, we're using the um, node migrator, uh, work items migrator, and then the two processes to migrate um, test artifacts across. And at the moment, we have them all set to false, excepting for the node um, option, which is set to true or the node processor. So we go ahead and run this um, so far. So when we run this um, execute, so we specify um, the exe execute and we specify the config of um, our custom config that I've just showed you. And when we run this, this will go ahead and uh, start migrating all our area paths and iteration paths across for us. Now you'll notice there's an error there. I found that um, most of the time the paths do still exist um, but the reason for running it sort of piece by piece is so that if you do see something um, that looks a bit out of the ordinary um, you can investigate that and then if needed uh, potentially run it again so we'll just go ahead and run that again quickly um, but if you if we take a look at the the paths you can see it does exist although that is still running in the background um, so there we go it's busy finishing off now so those paths did exist and we didn't really need to run it again but for sanity's sake, we ran it again, we had no errors, and everything looks good for us. You can see, um, if we just do a comparison there quickly, everything um, looks the same. Okay, so next we're going to go and migrate the work items. So we'll switch the work items process to true, the no structures process to false. Um, and we'll go and run that command again to migrate our work items. So what this is going to go and do is it's going to use the query bit um, to get all the work items that it needs to migrate. And it'll loop through each of those work items and basically revision for revision it's going to make the changes that those work items made and then commit that to the server. So it's going to go through all the links um, any state changes, pretty much everything that that was made to those work items, so it's basically can get replayed in the um, target account. Okay, and that's done. So let's take a look at what's in the accounts. So with the auto refresh on the boards, um, those issues in Epics already show up. So if we just do a comparison, you'll be able to see we do have the same Epics. Um, and issues in the new and old project. Um, our board, we'll just have to refresh the board because that doesn't auto refresh. You can see there, those same items are there. If we look at our test stuff, um, if we just refresh this so you can see uh, none of the test um, artifacts have been moved across yet as far as configuration and plans is considered at least um, because um, those we haven't yet migrated so we'll just close some tabs that we aren't going to be using um, going forward um, you can see if we run the query the test case is there because um, that's part of, sort of the normal uh, work items in in some respect um, but yeah okay so now we need to go and migrate those test plans um, across in the test suite so we'll switch the work items process to false and we'll switch the test configuration and the test plan and suites um, processor to true and we'll go and run this migration again. So let's give that a couple seconds to run. But yeah, that's basically going to go and recreate our test plan for us, um, create the test suite in there, add the test case to that test suite and then for the configuration it's going to go and make sure that each of those uh, pieces of configuration is in the target project. So that will, for us in this case, copy the Windows Server 2019 configuration across um, as part of that migration. Okay, and our test artifacts are now also migrated across. So we'll just go through to Azure DevOps and run that. So you can see there's our test plan and test suite. If 
we go through and refresh the tabs for those in Azure DevOps, you can see um, there's uh, oh, we'll open that one as well. You see there is an uh, exact match between the two. Obviously, the IDs are different because um, we won't have two IDs that are the same in the in the same account. And our configurations copied across as well. Okay, so we don't need these tabs anymore, so we'll just um, close those out as well. And next, we're going to make um, a couple of modifications and see how those sync. Now that we've sort of done that initial migration, we'll see what things look like. So we'll move um, the recovery work item to another epic. Go and create a new issue under another epic. Um, so we can see what that looks like when it's migrated across. So just uh, do something else for another epic. And we'll put that in the sprint 42. And then under the videos epic, uh, we also need to do this for that epic. And again, that'll be sprint 42. We'll save that. Okay. So if we look quickly, um, obviously that hasn't moved across yet because we haven't done any sort of migration. Back in our config, we'll say okay, false again for the test config because we're not migrating any test config now. Uh, the work item config, switch that back to true. And then we're going to go ahead and do a another migration run. Okay, so that's complete. Let's go see what Azure DevOps looks like now. So we'll go ahead and refresh this board quickly. And you can see um, that only two of the issues that we had touched had changes um, that sunk across. And that was the two new issues. Um, the recovery uh, item that we changed parents of that didn't move. And the reason for that is that this filter work items that already exist in the target was set to true. You'll change that to false. So normally what happens is you would do your migration with that set to true so that only new items that don't exist yet um, are moved across and then when you've done your migration you'll come and add um, to your query bits that it must only look at work items that have changed since the date you started your migration because for some bigger projects that could um, go across multiple days um, especially if there's a couple of hundred thousand work items. So we'll go and run our migration again at this time, including all the work items that exist in the target as well. Okay, it's done. So if we'll go open up Azure DevOps again, um, and we'll give us a refresh, you can see that that recovery item has now moved across. So for the hell of it, let's go and just make a bunch of changes now. So we'll go to our epics and we're just going to switch the the states of those two epics. Um, we'll go to our um, board again for the issues and we're going to just switch all the parents around um, for the issues. So they're all just going to switch to be different epics. Um, so you can see that's now um, so that should look mostly the same yeah and um, we'll just edit the title of this one and I suppose change the states a couple of times as well um, just to see what happens if the tool can handle it okay then we'll go back to the tool and run another migration remember this is still set to include all the items that exist in the target so this is going to rerun through all those work items, check all their revisions and make sure that all their links um, do match up. If we look in Azure DevOps along uh, with the live sync, you can see that um, there will already be some changes coming across. Um, you can see the, the issue with its new titles there and it's in the done column and that would have just um, come across we'll just wait for the rest of this to finish to see uh, what the other changes look like okay so let's take a look so we'll go ahead and just refresh all these tabs quickly um, and then you can see um, that all our changes match up 
um, between our epics, our issues, and then if we look at our boards or our backlogs, they also match up. And remember, this is an open source project. So if you have any issues, you can come log them um, on the account page. Feel free to do any pull requests um, with any feature additions or help fix bugs if, if you find any in the project. The tool itself does get used um, by consultants around the world for their customers um, on quite a big scale at the moment. So this isn't a sort of a small time tool. Um, so you, you can use it definitely with confidence, um, but just know that it does require some knowledge of of Azure DevOps and sort of the infrastructure underneath that. Um, if you do run into issues, that will that kind of knowledge will help you. Thank you for watching this video on migrating test artifacts using the Azure DevOps migration tools. As you can see, we can migrate all other work item types as well with this, um, but the primary focus of this was test cases because or test artifacts because those aren't easily migrated um, in the product. If you have any questions, leave them down in the comments, catch me on Twitter, or visit my profile page, beaming.dev, to see where else I am on the internet. Cheers.